next speaker is uh, Jean-Marie Stéphane, free fermions at the edge of interaction system. You. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so um, uh, first I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me. It's a, it's a pleasure to be, to be back here in Natal. Uh, so my talk will, is going to have some overlap, actually, with the previous talk. Uh, uh, but I will have perhaps a slightly different uh, perspective. So uh, let me uh, give just a, a brief uh, uh, outline of what I'm going to talk about. So I this will be related to, um, to Tracy Widom distributions and stuff like this, but I will try to have a more... Uh, uh I will try to put a more, like, let's say, quantum many-body perspective on this, uh, on this, on this problem. And uh, the way, the way uh, I mean, I think most of the audience would see this type of problem is through the prism of uh, free fermions. So I will spend some time uh, explaining how you can view uh, certain distributions uh, stemming from KPZ university class as uh, free fermion problems. And then I will uh, discuss a few examples where uh, you, can, you can see that uh, in uh, models we are more familiar with, uh, like uh, XXD spin chains and interacting problems. And then, uh, so this will be very much equilibrium physics, okay? And then I will try to do quantum uh, out of equilibrium physics and see, and see uh, what happens and, uh, and uh, if there is some uh, new interesting uh, behavior. So first, I, I will like, uh, uh, consider a really, really simple Hamiltonian. I think most of the audience are... I've seen that, so I just uh, have this second quantized uh, Hamiltonian, okay, which is free. So it's uh, so psi are fermionic operators; they anti-commute, and it's just a free fermion Hamiltonian, and it's just uh, well uh, uh, some model uh, in a harmonic trap. Okay, so you see there is this x square, uh, x square potential. Of course, this has been studied to death. Uh, it's uh, also relevant to uh, cold atom physics. Um, and uh, yeah, as I said, it's exa exactly solvable. It maps to, I mean, it, it is a free fermion uh, Hamiltonian because it's quadratic in the fermion op operators. And, uh, and the single particle states, you can explain, uh, you can obtain in explicit form. And to get them, it's, uh, well, what you have to do is, it's exactly the same problem as solving the quantum harmonic uh, oscillator. So in particular, the eigenstates are given by some Hermit uh, pole numbers. Okay, so this is a well-known problem. And I, I sorry. And how, why did this happen? Uh, let's see. Yes, okay, so this was, a, and, and of course, x square uh, has a physical meaning. I mean, it's a confining potential. So in cold atom systems, uh, this is a reasonable appro approximation to, uh, to, to real physics. But you can wonder why, why just for fun, uh, what happens if I put x instead? So okay, so it's still free, so you can solve this. Okay, and if you put uh, x instead, so it looks weird because it's not confining. I mean, the potential is very large to the, to the right, let's say, for x positive, but for x negative, it doesn't confine particles. Okay, but th this uh, you, can, you can solve. And if you do... What? I, I have, sorry, I have some slight issues with my... Yes? Um, so if you do, you can solve it. Uh, you can solve it uh, exactly, and the way you do it is uh, well, you introduce a uh, introduce sorry a bunch of uh, new operators uh, that allow you to diagonalize this quadratic form. Okay, and so I introduce new new modes which I call chi, okay, chi dagger, and there are some linear combination of the real space uh, fermions psi. Okay, and if I choose my function u of lambda x properly, I can write uh, the Hamiltonian in the diagonal form. Okay. So then it's going to be some integral of a lambda, some single particle energy epsilon lambda, lambda, chi dagger, chi. Okay, this provided the u of lambda x solves this uh, single particle Schrodinger equation. Okay, and in that case, the sh single particle Schrodinger equation, the solution is very well known, that it's uh, given by Airy function. Okay, so the u of lambda x, you can show it's an exercise that uh, it's given by this uh, Airy function, and here I recall the definition of the of the airy. Hmm? So not yet. I'm just solving the single particle problem. I'm just uh, basically I'm just diagonalizing this uh, quadratic form so far. Uh, next slide. Yeah. 
Um, okay, and uh, and the energy, the single particle energy is a uh, is uh, linear. Okay, so it's minus the energy is minus lambda. Okay. Hmm. So what do you say? Uh, no, they they decay to infinity. So every decay is uh, very fast to infinity. Okay. So they are they are exactly normalized. The normalization is one. There is no. You can check that. Uh, I mean, yes, that they are. Uh, okay. So uh, if you have this, then you can wonder what what would be the ground state of this model. So usually in quantum, maybe what the what to do is you solve the single particle problem and then you fill all the states uh, that have negative energy and if you fill all the states that have negative energy then you will have the ground state the absolute ground state of this uh, of this uh, hamiltonian okay and if you do that well i just told you that uh, the energy is minus lambda so it's very easy to find the ground state you just need so lambda can be any real number i forgot to say uh, and so to get the ground state you need just need to pick the lambda that are positive so you you do you do that, uh, and what you you find is uh, some kind of Dirac C. Okay, so all values of lambda positive are allowed. So the energy is strictly speaking infinite, but uh, I don't uh, I mean I don't care about this. It's just uh, uh, and I say it's uh, it's some kind of Dirac C. And if I do that, I can look at uh, so what's the propagator in quantum anybody uh, uh, context, uh, and I compute this. I use my area function and I get this. Formula, okay, and this formula is is um, is exactly the airy kernel from the previous talk, okay. So I can view the airy kernel as just uh, the ground state propagator, if you want, in this uh, simple predetermined model, okay. Uh, and so in this in this system, it's a bit uh, it's a bit weird because so particle number is infinite, okay, and you can show that uh, so I'm on my fermions live on the real line, and you can show that. Uh, the fermion number, if you want, in the interval minus a to infinity, diverges as uh, two. I mean, uh, this exact formula. So it's uh, strictly speaking, the number of fermions in my real interval is infinite. If you can, yes. <laughs> uh, well, uh, so there is an infinite uh, number to the left, basically. And very few to the right. The density is finite everywhere, but the yeah. So the density is just this uh, given by you. You put y equals x. So there is an explicit formula, and some well-defined function. The density, yeah. The density is finite, but the integrated density. Yeah, it's uh, reasonably localized. Yeah. Okay, so this is uh, so this is just a way to interpret this uh, this a a this uh, airy kernel. Like I see that as a propagator in some pre-Fermi model, which is just this linear potential thing. Of course, it's uh, well known. I mean, I'm just rephrasing this known stuff in, in this context of the quantum many uh, body uh, system. And okay, if you have this, you can ask lots of questions. One you can ask is uh, what are what are the statistics for charge? So number of particles in some in some interval. So for example, I define Q, which is the start to psi dagger psi density, if you want. Uh, and I can wonder uh, what are the statistics of this uh, of this uh, charge. And so and so the natural object is uh, to consider this uh, this, uh, uh, this. I mean, this is called con full quantum statistics in condensed matter uh, literature. So I can do that. And uh, if of course, uh, since I have a preferred problem, I can solve uh, everything explicitly. So just just uh, 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 just uh, to show that uh, I can do this, so you can just do it by brute force calculation. So you have you have this uh, generating function, you expand the exponential, you apply Vick's theorem, blah blah. blah. The, the steps don't really matter, but you have some explicit functions, uh, and in the end, what you find is this uh, freedom determinant uh, from the previous talk. Okay, so it's valid for any alpha. Okay, this gives the full counting statistics if you. So this in principle, this formula is valid for any alpha. 
but you can you can look at the, the the limit alpha goes to minus infinity and the limit alpha goes to minus infinity will essentially select only the the the, the case where charge is uh, zero okay so then it's like uh, computing some kind of uh, emptiness so you, you you compute the probability that there are no fermions in some interval uh, from let's say minus infinity to s and if you use this formula then you get exactly the formula from for the previous talk and this this uh, emptiness formation probability so really i have like a a bunch of uh, a bunch of fermions on the real line okay so and i just ask uh, yeah so what's the probability that uh, uh, sorry, I think it's the opposite, the other way around. So I ask what's the probability that there are no fermions in this in this interval, and I get an exact formula. And this exact formula has a name in random matrix theory context, and it's called Tracy Widom distribution. Okay, so that's a, if you want a free fermion interpretation of this uh, Tracy uh, Widom uh, distribution, and uh, so this plot has been shown before also. So it's just, uh, I mean, for practical, practical purposes, it's just uh, some probability density function like uh, that I showed like this. So I, here I showed the derivative, which is the yeah, probability density function associated to this. Um, and uh, and it, it basically, it looks like a Gaussian, but it's uh, slightly skewed. So it's not a perfect Gaussian. Uh, there is an asymmetry between uh, left and right. Uh, and this, uh, and this, uh, this curve is universal. So as explained before, it, uh, it pops up in a variety of contexts. So ASAP and company, and so I actually, it's, uh, okay, so b before I b get into that, I will explain how this could be relevant to to more uh, regular free fermion models. So, and I come back to my Hamilton from the beginning. So at the very beginning, I said, well, it's more physical to have X square because it's really, I mean, in experimental setup, that's really what you get. And so you might wonder uh, why why would uh, X be relevant at all? And, uh, and actually the, the uh, and actu actually, it turns out that it is in some in some regime, and so the so of course this problem you can solve uh, exactly, but it's uh, maybe n nicer to or easier to to, to look at it uh, with uh, uh, let's say a more heuristic uh, arguments. And so the way the way you do it is the you use um, you use what's called the semi-classical arguments or or local density approximation in in um, cold atom literature, and what you do you is you say, well, I have this uh, system, there are a bunch of, of fermions, and I, I look at some, around some point, which I, I call uh, X naught, and I say, well, uh, and I just look at what happens in the neighborhood of, the, of, this, of this point. So, uh, and so then the, 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 the ground state is obtained by uh, selecting only uh, the, the, the energies, if you want, uh, where this uh, is negative. And if I do that, uh, basically I'm saying that the uh, x squared doesn't matter. I mean, I, I consider this as a constant uh, around, if I sufficiently close to some position x naught. So I just assume that, okay? I do that, and I can, uh, and I can, um, and I can uh, easily solve uh, this problem. And if you solve this problem, you can find the propagator, so the ground state propagator of this model, and you will find this, uh, this simple uh, formula, which goes under the name uh, sine kernel. Okay, so that's that's what you have. So it's not related to what I was talking about, uh, uh, but uh, wait uh, for it. Uh, so another remark, which was uh, pointed out uh, also in the previous talk, is that this problem you can so also see if you want as a random matrix problem. You don't need to, but you can if you want. And so because the the, the if you want the ground state wave function of this model in the harmonic trap, you can express it exactly uh, as some uh, using the van der Mond, uh, identity. Uh, and so, and so you find an exact formula, which is so. If I take modulus square, just for simplicity of this ground state wave function, I will find this exact expression. So product uh, i less than j x i minus x j square uh, confined in some connector. And this, this on the right hand side. So the left hand side is my free fermion problem. On the left, on the right hand side, well, it's a known uh, uh, quantity in random matrix theory. So it's a uh, it's a joint uh, eigenvalue probability density function for GUE uh, random matrices. And so I think this was pointed out. Uh, okay, probably it was known from very long ago, but I think the first that said this explicitly was, uh, was Victor. And then this connection has been used in several uh, other papers uh, later. Okay, and in that case, the density profile is a, is a, is a, 
is is very is very simple. So the the if I have uh, n particles, okay, the all the particles they are confined in some finite region this time, uh, which is the, and the density is given by Wigner semicircle rule. So it's just uh, this uh, uh, root. So if I want to change, uh, this is the this is x and uh, this is the square root of mu, where mu is the chemical potential, and it's given by this simple. Uh, formula and mu is related to the particle number okay so okay so far uh, so good this has nothing to do with uh, what I was uh, with airy kernel and stuff but what you might wonder is what happens so here I have a well-defined density profile and outside of this region density is zero and you might wonder oh, well what happens near the edge okay and if you do that you can still at hand waving level uh, well uh, say oh, okay it's uh, I, I use the same semi classical um, kind of uh, argument and I say well it's uh, it's more or less the same so I just say that x is close to root mu so x is close to the edge I expand this okay and then I say that uh, x so since I'm in the neighborhood of uh, I'm close to this point I say that uh, uh, I look on scales that are much smaller than the full system size okay so the full system size is square root of mu so if I expand this square I have a bunch of free terms Okay, and if x is of order is much smaller than square root of mu, means the last term is you can neglect. Okay, so I just do that. I find this. Okay, then uh, I say, well, uh, you know, k uh, is like uh, is like a momentum. So I say it's like uh, taking so k square is like uh, uh, semi classically it's like taking second derivative. So I get this. Okay, so I have this which looks uh, nice. And then I say, okay, I can rescale so that the both terms are of the, of the same order. So you can find the scale on which both terms are of the same order, and you find this, okay? And and if you find this, then you're back to the airy kernel I was talking about. You're back to free fermions, but in a harmonic potential. So even though you started from a model which was quadratic potential with confinement close to the edge, actually the potential will look linear. So that's the only thing you need to know. It's actually, and you don't need even harmonic potential. It can be essentially any reasonably behaved potential. You just uh, have an edge, and close to the edge, uh, the potential will look linear anyway. Okay, and so and so yeah, and let, let me be clear that this 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 is known. It's just I'm reformulating this in terms of uh, uh, like a free harmonic uh, thing. Uh, and so semi-classically, if you want, uh, you go from uh, this, uh, this, uh, this density profile, you can view that as a disk in phase space. So I have like a position and k, and I go from a disk to a parabolic uh, region, which is uh, yeah, this. Okay, so this is a simple example where you, you find this. Uh, so basically, well the, then the, the, the statement is that, so I have this simple free fermion model in a harmonic trap. Okay, I have a given density profile, and if I zoom, close to the edge where the density goes to zero, I will see Tracy Whedon. In particular, if I want to really look at the distribution of the last fermion, let's say, so the, the rightmost fermion, I will find that it will scale to the Tracy Whedon distribution. Uh, and, uh, and this is even proven, this is proven, why? Because uh, actually in that case, uh, the quantum anybody problem is really related to a problem that was already solved by Tracy Whedon long ago. So in that case, you, you get it uh, for free. So there were lo there are lots of other examples where this pop-up. I, I give uh, one that was not given, so that's uh, another another one which I like very much. So just because I can show pictures, uh, so one one nice thing. Uh, so you can get it also in statistical, so in equilibrium statistical mechanics, uh, when you do dimer coverings uh, on this weird lattice which uh, goes under the name uh, Aztec diamond. So what I do, so a dimer is just a, uh, some entity that lives on the edge. Okay with the constraint that uh, each uh, each site has to be occupied by one dimer and one dimer only. So there are many ways uh, to, to pave this, this dimer. So I um, so I put, uh, let's say, three of them. So I have a bunch of colors. So just the color, the color code will be just to make the picture nicer, nicer but the color code is uh, just that I distinguish between vertical and horizontal dimer. So that gives me two colors. And then I label the sites uh, by some integers, so like one, two, three, four, five, six, and depending on the parity, I use a different color. So then I have a, a four colors. So this is an example of. A, and then if I pave uh, all, th this is an example of a configuration I can. So there are many ways to pave this, but uh, this is one particular that I showed you. Okay, 
And so, and this, so this has been uh, widely studied in statistical mechanics, also probability theory. And uh, the very uh, nice thing that happens is that, so this is a relatively small lattice, but you can wonder what happens when you try to, to look at larger and larger lattices. So here I increase the, so I remove the lattice, just so that you can feel better. Uh, so, and then I increase the size. Now I increase again the size, I increase again the size. And so I think, yes, this is the largest I have. And so this is really like out of the millions, of uh, out of the very, very many, many configurations, I just pick one at random. So I really here picked one at random, okay? And the funny thing is that it happens that the, 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 the shape looks exactly like a circle. And uh, so this has a cool name called Arctic Circle Theorem, and this was a proof uh, like uh, 20, years, uh, 20 years ago. Okay, so it's, uh, in, in a way, it's, uh, it's an example of uh, emerging hydrodynamic behavior also. It's more in statistical mechanics, and actually it's related to, I think, uh, um, uh, and this has been done by, I think, Sasha Albanov, that this is related also to complex burger situation. So there are some relations to, uh, to, to, uh, uh, to the, the, the previous talk also, even though it's uh, slightly different. So there are, I mean, it l it's similar, but uh, it's not exactly the same thing. And this was... And I think this complex burger equation was even proved uh, later on. Uh, yes? And it's a non-trivial uh, thing. It's not, uh, it's not uh, obvious, but it, uh, but it, uh, it happens. So you, you can really prove that uh, the corner, so yes, so what this means is that really, like all these dimers, they are vertical on the left and uh, horizontal at the bottom top with probability one. So in the thermodynamic limit, in the limit of infinite system, you can really show that there are, yeah, the dimers are, do not fluctuate anymore outside of this region. So inside of the region, there are uh, complicated fluctuations, which, uh, which, uh, uh, which I described by some, so it's still, um, it's still a critical system. So there are uh, power law decay of correlation. This has been studied in, uh, in several works, I just, yeah, here I just picked the one where I was involved with, but there are many other works uh, on this. Because this is an example of a critical system, uh, so it's uh, in the Luttinger liquid universality class. Uh, okay, but the point is that you can also, so you have this kind of system, it's, uh, so you can describe this with hydrodynamic arguments also, at least in the free case, the interacting is uh, more tricky. Uh, and uh, you, you can wonder also, well, what happens at the edge, right? Because it's, the, it's kind of the same as, uh, I mean, it's superficially it's the same, right? I have some density profile. You want some probability that the dimers are vertical. And so, and I have this, so it's a completely, uh, I mean, it's, uh, it doesn't fluctuate outside this circle and then its density varies. And so you might wonder what happens at the edge. And at the edge also you, uh, And at the edge, also, it happens that uh, the fluctuations of the, if you want the right, so you can view that as a collection of particles. And if you want the, the fluctuations of the rightmost particles, they also go to straight to the edge. And this was proved by uh, uh, Johansson uh, in 2005. Hmm? What, what? It's uh, just uh, depending on parity of the site number. So it's just, uh, it's a bipartite lattice if you want. So you have two sub lattices. And I just chose a uh, color depending on sub lattice. So I choose color depending on uh, vertical versus horizontal, and for vertical, depending on sub lattice. I don't need to do that, but it makes the picture nicer. Yes. No, no, no. So I think it, so. This has been studied in probability theory. So there are a bunch of other yes. So it's generically tracy with them in the sense, uh, yes, if it doesn't touch this point. But uh, yeah, any other, it's uh, tracy with them. Yes. 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 Uh, so the fact that you get a circle is a kind of, uh, I mean, you don't need to get a circle in general. It's not true. It's just in this particular case, which. Uh, I, then you, so, so yes, yeah, so then there are limit shapes, so different shapes, and if you want, it's a business uh, how you determine this, and it's, uh, I mean, for free systems, it's uh, understood how you do that in general. 
for interacting with more complicated ones. But uh, yeah. yeah, because I forgot to say, but this sim simple dimer packing models, I mean, I won't explain how it's done, but it maps to some free family problem. Also, if you want. Uh, okay, and so if you have this, so that's uh, uh, related to what you were saying. You, well, you might say, well, what happens if I have uh, if I have interaction? So, for example, you can do simulation. So I, here I do the same dimer model, and I put attractive interactions. And uh, the shape looks a bit different, but actually uh, you can uh, you can wonder what happens uh, near near the edge also. And it's uh, so. And this is another simulation where dimers I put some kind of different uh, interactions. Um, so you can do that also in the six vertex model. I won't um, uh, spend uh, too much uh, time on it, but there, are, there there is a whole class of model where you can study this uh, this limit shape. But the the but the point is that uh, so in all these problems there are limit shapes. So here, these are if you want there are limit shapes. You can view that as some kind of limit shape in statistical mechanics. The quantum problem I was seeing, ground state quantum problem I was seeing from before. You can view that also as some kind of uh, limit shape problem. There is there is a density profile and then density vanishes outside of the region. Uh, and uh, and uh, and the point is that uh, if you want to establish Tracy Widom scaling, if you start from a free fermion problem, then it's easier. Uh, if uh, you so, for example, if I take this uh, model here, uh, there is no real hope to prove that. Uh, fluctuations at the edge they go to Tracy Widom, even though it's widely believed to be true because there is some universality behind it. So I think, uh, th yeah, there are proof for different different models that are also interacting. So this is the ASAP that was talked about. So there, it was done by Tracy Widom, but I, apparently there are other generalizations I didn't know about. So uh, yeah, so and so ASAP, it, it, it is, um, so it's related, uh, once again, it's related to this kind of uh, problems, but uh, I think ASAP is maybe a little bit easier in some technical sense. Uh, okay, so motivated by this, you say, uh, are there like simple models where I can hope to at least have some analytical understanding, or at least at the hand waving level, of why uh, the edge uh, should be should be traced with them, even for interacting. And so I talked to, to you about this uh, fermion model in a harmonic trap. So what you can, uh, I mean, the, I mean, if you come from uh, quantum many body background the first question you ask okay then I can do uh, I can do something that's integrable but not free and so what the most natural generalization of this well it's um, uh, it's the lib linear model okay so it's a similar uh, so it's a Hamilton for boson now but uh, but there is still uh, you, you put still a bunch of particles in a trap uh, the only so this is integrable but it's considered to be yeah, but it is uh, interacting sorry so this is the Hamilton and you can show actually that some limit of this model, which is G goes to, I mean, it's not obvious from this because here psi are bosons. But you can show that, and it's well known that the, the limit G goes to infinity actually maps back to the free uh, fermion problem in the harmonic trap uh, from the very beginning. Okay, and so you, you have this and you say, and, and, um, and, um, and you might wonder, well, okay, can I, I actually convince myself that there is Tracy Widom at the edge? Because the important point is that I explained Tracy Widom as a free fermion problem. So it's not completely obvious a priori how I would get Tracy Widom, which means in this language free fermions, at the edge of uh, an interacting system. So that uh, you might wonder why this is true. And, um, uh, and, uh, and I, there is a very simple argument why this, I mean, hand waving argument why this is true. Okay, and this type of problem you can also solve using, uh, using uh, standard quantum anybody techniques. Um, so in principle, the, the trapping potential breaks integrability, but you but there are, but um, you can use semi-classical argument or local density approximation to, to 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 draw, for example, density profiles. So this has been done. Uh, uh, this has been done uh, some time some time ago uh, already, and uh, you can write some. Uh, so the it's it's slightly more complicated, but you can you can handle this with uh, what's called uh, TBA uh, TBA equations. And so you uh, you introduce some density of uh, so you, you 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 look at things in phase space and you introduce some density of uh, quasi particles. So I won't uh, bother you too much with the detail, but but the point is that uh, you can draw density profiles uh, like this. They are more complicated. They are you cannot have them in explicit form, but they solve. So if you want the, the to get the density profile, it's not just square root of uh, 
mu minus x squared from, uh, from before. Okay, I think it was 1 over pi. So the particle number at position x, not the two-leading order given by this. Some more complicated thing that comes from solving these linear integral equations. Uh, but the point is that if you look at the edge, and it's actually an old story in, uh, in uh, integrable systems, if you look at the edge, so th this very term here, integral, which is zero for free ferment. So for free ferment, the potential is the V, the kernel, sorry, is zero. And then it's much easier. And for, and for all these problems, well, the, the edge is pre precisely the location, okay, by, uh, almost by definition, the edge is precisely the location where, well, this, uh, if you want the boundary of integrations, the KF is zero, okay? So then, I, so then if you want an integrable system, I have, this, uh, I have this dressing here, and the edge is exactly the point where there is no dressing. So even if you start from an integrable system, uh, which is interacting, you say, well, actually at the edge, uh, there is no dressing. So I say, well, then it should be, then it should be free ferment. And, uh, and this kind of argument uh, just, just, just works. Yeah, so that's that's the that's the claim. And so, if you want the f more physical picture, is that I, I might have very strong interactions in the bulk. Okay, in the bulk, the system is strongly interacting. But at the edge, there are very few particles, and if there are very few particles, density is very small. And so, it doesn't matter uh, what are the interactions. In the end, they are just renormalized to zero, and I'm back to free. So it's kind of, I mean, from physical perspective, it's kind of a, it's kind of an obvious argument, but uh, it's good to check that this holds even for these uh, distributions of. Uh, of particles, and that, so that's the claim. And the point is that you you can get uh, exactly the the the, the scale uh, under which uh, this goes to uh, to airy. Uh, so we are back to airy airy business uh, again. So if you like field theory, another way to to see that is to say that uh, uh, basically you you uh, inter uh, so in the field theory language interactions they are parameterized by the Luttinger parameter. Uh, and so if you want, I, I, I have some, you have some non-trivial density profile, okay, with the Luttinger parameter that parameterize interactions. K, so this K varies with position. It's something that can be complicated, but it takes the free Fermat value at the, at the edge in all these kind of problems. Yes, and so, so that's basically the claim. And, uh, and so then you can look at this uh, last particle distribution and check that it goes to Tracy Whedon. And so another example where I can, you can check that is also the XXD spin chain. So you can do the, the play the same game with an XXD spin chain in a magnetic field. Okay, so this is uh, given by this uh, Hamilton. And I take some, um, some magnetic field that depends on position. So here I, I think of R as some large, I take R large. Uh, and so that the magnetic field varies uh, slowly uh, with, with position. Okay, and this kind of problem you can also study with uh, standard uh, integrable uh, techniques. And then this tells you that uh, this, the argument I was talking about tells you that there is Tracy with um, scaling, and it tells you with, with which scale you need to rescale, so sorry, for the, yes, which, which is the relevant scale under which uh, you go to Tracy with them. And this gives actually an analytical prediction of this, which depends on delta, uh, which uh, delta is interaction, interacting uh, interaction square. So you get this, uh, and it's in principle an exact formula, which I derive with, uh, so it's uh, as far as you want from a proof. I mean, it's just pure hand waving, yes? So I think the, the ground state of this, if you think of uh, H constant, the ground state of this is fully polarized, I think, if H is uh, larger than one plus delta. So you can show that the, the the ground state of this is fully polarized if, uh, if you are larger. And if you're smaller, then uh, they are fluctuating. So then I just to determine where is the edge, I just need to know where this H of X over, y over R equals uh, this. So this defines the edge, and then I do, I do it. I, maybe it's better with a picture. So this is the, this is the density profile, and this is, uh, this is uh, what I what I get. So I get some non-trivial density profile. So here it's, p it's a magnetization. It's not particle exactly, but uh, there is a mapping. And, uh, and then I say, well, uh, ah, so there are non-trivial density profile, which are complicated, okay? But then I say, well, close to the edge, I can look at the distribution if you want. So this is magnetization. So this means down spins, and uh, one is up spin. 
and I can look at the distribution of the last uh, down spin on the right. And, uh, and if I look at this distribution, I will find that uh, it goes to it goes to Tracy Williams. So this is a plot where I, I really look at the distribution of the last down spin for in various interaction parameters. And you see it, it goes uh, very nicely to, to Tracy Williams. And so this was done. Uh, so and the ground state I found during using the GMRD. Okay. So it's a nice example where you can. And here I really rescale. So in principle, all not all those points are on the same scale. They are on the same uh, scale because I use this uh, this L delta here, which depends on delta to put them all on the same curve. So it's a it's a test of this argument because uh, this argument predicts uh, how you need to rescale to get this. Okay. So this is uh, basically this is the this is the logic, and I think this should hold for any reasonable. It doesn't even need to be integrable. I think you for any reasonable interacting system, this should hold, provided I think uh, it's important to point that out. Provided the interactions are sufficiently local. So if they are long range, it's not obvious this will hold, because uh, even if particles are diluted at the edge, if they are long range interaction, they will feel the bulk strongly. And I think probably the borderline case is uh, an exactly solvable no model that goes under the name Calogero Sutherland with inverse square interactions. And in that particular case, you can show it doesn't go to Tracy Williams. It goes to a different thing, different beast, which is called beta, beta Tracy Williams. So, so presumably the, the conjecture would be that if interaction decays faster than two, okay, I have no idea how to show, I mean, to check this, but presumably if interaction decay faster than two, then we will be back to the behavior from before. Uh, okay, so how much time do I have? Yes. yes. No, so I really just looking at the. So I am. Um, so Tracy Widom technically is the distribution of the like rightmost particle. So the distribution of the right or la rightmost uh, down or up spin. Yes. So this will go to Tracy Widom. Then uh, the. The yes, so in principle, this is only this. Yes. Uh, so in this argument, I can't I can't get uh, anything else than G. Yes. Yes. So yes, because if you if you want the beta in. Yes, so it's not, yeah, so in this context, not obvious how I can do that. So I, don't, I don't know. Maybe there is a way, but uh, yeah, so for this class of problem, like a uh, interacting model in traps, then uh, it seems like, uh, I mean, unless I have sufficiently long range interaction, I always go back to uh, beta equals, I go always go back to G, uh, uh, with them G U. Yes. Uh, okay. And so, and so, and so, I have much time did I? I forgot. Okay, so uh, okay, won't be able to say much, but uh, yes, yeah, so, and of course you can. I mean, another class of problem where you have a, a non-trivial magnetization profile and uh, edges and everything I, are, of course, out of equilibrium uh, uh, problems, uh, which uh, are possibly are, are I mean, hopefully are of interest to many people in the audience. And so, one of my favorite uh, um, out of equilibrium problem is a simple quench protocol where I prepare a, a, a system just in a domain wall initial state and I let evolve with the Hamilton of the XAG uh, spin chain. So this has been studied uh, for, for a long time. I think there are, there are, like, it's like there are many, many, many papers on this uh, exact uh, protocol. I mean, there are, you can do more general things, but there are many papers on this exact protocol. So I think it was first uh, studied like uh, 20, 20 years ago. Then this was uh, the, uh, the density profiles and current profiles were solved during uh, using uh, this uh, generalized hydrodynamic uh, framework, um, and um, and for this particular quench, actually, you can even uh, you can even I think it's the only case I known where uh, you can solve the GHD equations uh, exactly. So there are analytical analytical, uh, analytical formulas for the uh, for the for the density profile, and so and so these are shown these are shown here. So here, what uh, what happens is that I start from a product state. Okay, and then uh, and then so if you want the the the, magnet the density profile at the beginning is this, so it's just one on the left, 
So one means plus, zero means uh, minus, okay? And at time t, what happens is that you get some, uh, some non-trivial density profile like, uh, that usually takes a form like this. And here I show only the right part, okay? And so you can do that for various, interact, uh, various values of delta. And for delta, not zero, it, uh, it's interacting. Um, okay, and so this uh, you can solve actually uh, exactly. This has been done uh, using GHD. Um, and the, the, the difference that you get, so when it's uh, free fermions, so I think this has been done by Victor, when it's free fermions, you can show also that the distribution of the rightmost spins goes to Tracy Williams. Okay, you can show this by direct calculation. But away from free fermions, what you get is that the density profile is actually linear, uh, close, to, close to the edge. And so, and so, this, uh, so this is different from uh, what you get in this, uh, all these trap, uh, trap uh, problem. And so you expect a different, uh, different behavior. Because actually, the, the root density profile in phase space is really related to the fact that uh, you have k square in the dispersion. So I mean, it's, it's something like a, a k square less than u minus x naught square, and k you see as some Fermi momentum. So then it means density, uh, which is related to kf, will vanish as square root. I mean, we said that k is square root of something, and then this is how it goes. But here it's uh, it's linear, so you expect you expect something here. And I think so in the and this has been explored uh, uh, in particular by uh, Andrea, uh, Mario, and Jacopo. Uh, and what they, so I, they didn't formulate it like this, but in my language, uh, what, what they find is that instead of k squared, you have to put k, okay? So this is a guess. You, you, you guess that maybe this is related to this. Uh, and, if you, and if you get that, uh, uh, so you, in principle, get a different kernel, which is not, uh, which is not uh, airy anymore. Okay, so you have this, um, and um, uh, yes, and so what I forgot to say, uh, and which is important, is that so if you look closely at these density profiles, so there, there are two edges. Okay, so one which is called the GHD. So at GHD level, uh, this the density vanishes. Okay, but you can see that uh, in a for finite time, the density does not exactly vanishes. So there are subleading corrections, which means that uh, the the the, the density is not uh, is not quite zero, and so and and uh, in particular, uh, the density is is small, but uh, but not that small of order one of our time, if you want, uh, until this point one, which is the the maximum speed of propagation, because you know in such a system that uh, if you want you can view that as some kind of Lib Robinson bound, so you cannot fa propagate faster than the speed of uh, three particles, and so in principle this gets. Uh, this gets tricky, so you 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 you, you want to say that you get this kind of behavior near uh, this uh, edge uh, here from that you get from GHD. It was also, but you can also look at what happens uh, near x equals t. So this, which I call free, free edge. Okay. So then it's not uh, even clear where where the edge is and uh, what would be the right uh, distribution of. Uh, I mean, the, the distribution of what you need to. To consider, so the fast speed goes at t, and actually you observe also, it was observed also t to the one sort behavior near the, sorry, uh, near near this thing. So what happens is that the density vanishes to leading order. It here it becomes like one over time if you want, and then after this it vanishes. Uh, there is some t to the one third scaling around this, and then it vanishes uh, exponentially fast. So it's a uh, uh, yes, so this is what you, what you get. And the, the problem with that, this, this problem actually is still not known uh, what's the exact solution because this kernel that uh, Jacopo and, and Mario and Andrea uh, uh, guessed, uh, it's quali qualitatively correct, I think, but it's not uh, exactly. So here is a simulation and you see that it doesn't match uh, perfectly. And, uh, and it led to, to many, many subtleties. One, I think, which is important is that uh, if you look at the, the density profile around this uh, around this edge, actually you find that it decays as one over distance, which means uh, you run into lots of, because so usually with, with the airy kernel, it decays extremely fast. It decays faster than exponential. So here you have an edge with a, with a, with a, with a kernel or with a density, if you want, that decays as one over distance. So it's not even, it's not even integrable. So it means uh, it, has to be, it has to be more complicated than that. 
And so, but what you can do is that really look at the distribution of the last particle. So this you can do numerically at least. Uh, and what and what you see is this uh, this kind of bizarre curve that have a uh, well that have that don't, don't look like trace widom uh, at all. So this is really the distribution of the rightmost uh, spin. And you see that uh, so this is the GHD edge. This is the free edge if you want. And so you see that it's really is extremely extremely delocalized. De okay. So it's not it's not so it's a very peculiar edge behavior that uh, uh, well personally I don't I don't uh, really understand except for the fact that I think the 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 fact that the density decays as one over uh, distance seems to be seems to be correct. So then it's a weird yeah it's a weird distribution where uh, it's peaked around GHD then it decays slowly and then there is some t to the one third here and then it it gets killed. So it's you, you so yeah so the message is I don't know I don't know what this is but I it's not Tracy Widom. Yes. Ah, uh, uh, I think it's lattice spacing, probably. Yes. Yes. No, no. No, because to get Tracy Widom, you you don't need only t to the one third. You need the formula I showed before. No, so uh, we can check, but I don't think it's correct. Actually, uh, so you, you so for free fermions, free you can you can get it, but for but uh, if you look at the so actually there you can cook up a free fermionic model, which I think we studied with Jacopo back uh, a few years ago. Uh, you can cook up a free fermion model, uh, which has similar behavior as uh, as this. Okay, and uh, and if you look at the the formula in that case, you see similar behavior, but they are not uh, tracy with them. So, yes. Yes, and so yes, and thanks for the remark. So this is a regime. So they are still diffusive correction, or maybe diffusive up to log. So I don't know, but uh, they, but uh, yes, but in your paper, I think your prediction, the prediction would be, I mean, not through the mechanism of your of your paper, I think. Yes. So it's still diffusive, but I don't know where it comes uh, from exactly. Uh, yes, but just to show to show this, so you can compute this numerically, and sh so one nice thing about if the only thing you need, to, in a way, uh, if if there is one thing you need to know about the tracy widom is that it's not a Gaussian, and if it's not a Gaussian, it means the third cumulant is non-zero. Okay, so you can compute this what's called the skewness. So it's like uh, the second, the, the third cumulant. Sorry, so it's given by this formula. And for tracy widom, it go it goes to it's given by an exact number, which you can compute exactly, which is 0 0.22408. And so then you can look at the distribution of the rightmost spin. And if you compute this Qness as a function of interaction, you find that when delta is zero, so which is the free Fermat case, it seems to go very nicely to the Tracy Widom one. And otherwise, it seems to blow up. So this is on logarithmic scale. So it could be that uh, so the, yeah, the T axis is on logarithmic scale. So so it looks, I don't know what it is, it looks sort of not too far from linear. So it could be that the, this Qness blows logarithmically. So it could be that uh, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, that there are essentially uh, log, log uh, everywhere. So I don't understand this. Yes, so maybe I'll go back to this. Um, yeah, so basically to, to, to summarize, you get kind of weird behavior where, so at uh, the leading order density vanishes, but there are one over t corrections here on one ST correction until you reach uh, X over T uh, equals one. Uh, and so and so I think it's, a, it's an interesting uh, problem. And so, yes, and I have uh, two minutes only. Uh, yeah, so let me quickly wrap up. Uh, yeah, so basically it's not clear uh, if, it's, uh, if you can apply the same. So because I, I looked at equilibrium problems at the beginning where I'm reasonably confident this all works. Here it's not clear uh, if you're allowed to use uh, Arguments like, well, you know, particles are diluted and something, so they should be free, and this should be. So it's, it's it's not clear, but the, but the, if you look at the rightmost particle, it's really, really very, very delocalized. So in the end, the, the yeah, so the distribution is very different. Um, okay, and just uh, to 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 finish, so I won't have time to explain, but uh, there are ways, in principle, where you can compute this, and so and it's related to these pictures I was showing before. So this was the Arctic Circle from before. And you can actually, there are observables you can you can compute in this uh, statistical model, which uh, 
in principle, if you are able to solve it exactly, will give you the, the answer for the quench problem. And the way you do it is that in this, in this statistical mechanical model, you start computing like some probability that, so you can view that if you want these colors, you can view that as pins. Let's say the, the, the orange uh, uh, means that the spins are up, okay? And you can compute the probability that all the spins up to some position X are up, okay? So this, if you want this, I, this is the Arctic circle from before, but I ask that uh, all the spins be up uh, to a certain position here. And this gives a weird shape like this that have been studied also, but in principle, so this is for a different thing, so I uh, ask that uh, all are up and up to this, and you get this kind of uh, complicated curve, so this is just uh, pictures. But this, in, in principle, this kind of observables, you can uh, compute exactly, so it's very, very, very difficult, but there are techniques from interability to, to do that. And in principle, if you can compute this observable, you will get uh, the answer to a bunch of uh, uh, nasty uh, calculation, uh, even for the, for the quench problem, okay? So I don't have time to explain, but... Uh, but this is, uh, this is basically, so there is, uh, in principle, this distribution of the rightmost upspin, you could access really from a, a lattice scratch, uh, from scratch, from lattice calculation, that would be exact, but, uh, but, it's, uh, but I've been saying that for at least a year or two, so it's a slow progress. <laughs> okay, and to finish, so basically what I wanted to say is that uh, the only thing you need to know is that, uh, which is kind of uh, almost, uh, yeah, that uh, if you have an interacting system, well, uh, the edge where the density goes to zero is free, so it's normal to expect free behavior. And, uh, and this uh, sort of explains, it's one of the reasons why uh, Tracy Widom pops up with so many, so many problems. And, uh, the, the, and, uh, uh, but if you want to study more out of equilibrium quantum problem, then there are, there are many, many subtleties and it's not clear what you get. And apparently Tracy Widom is not that generic in that case. So it's, uh, I think it's an interesting uh, problem, and with that, I think open the floor. Questions? Oops. <laughs>